let's talk about Dido, Queen of Carthage. A play originally acted by underage children. That's right, by minors. Um, Dido, Queen of Carthage is the one work we will read that we know Marlowe had a collaborator on that he wrote with a fellow writer named Thomas Nash. Let me talk about who Nash is, who the actors of this play are, and what the source material is. And we'll see if that takes up how much of our time that takes up. Nash also went to Cambridge, uh, Cambridge University in England. He is a playwright and pamphleteer. He, in some ways, gets in, um, he gets in even more trouble than Marlowe, except instead of getting arrested and killed, he just gets kind of banned and um, has his books burned and things like this. He is always in trouble. Nash is always in trouble when he's trying to make the authorities happy. There is no picture of Marlowe. There is that picture you will sometimes see of Marlowe that is from his Cambridge College and is of someone the right age, but is almost certainly um, one of the rich boys. Uh, how do I know this? One, it's an oil painting. Two, which, which Marlowe could not have afforded to have painted. Two, what he's wearing. So that picture probably is not Marlowe. We're left with Marlowe as a total mystery. All we have is the words. We have one image of Nash. It's a woodcut made by one of his enemies, and it shows Nash in shackles, chained at the ankles. Um, again, one of his enemies. Ha 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 ha. Nash, you're going to get arrested because you've made the censors angry again. You know, how uh, back when we talked about the uh, Ovid's Amores, I talked about the big book burning six years after Marlowe died, where his, um, his translation of Ovid got burned in the churchyard. Yeah, what happened to Nash that day is they burned every single one of his books and forbade any more thing, anything else by him to be published ever again and ordered that anything, any books by Nash should be searched out and destroyed. So... A pretty bad day for Tommy. Nash, um, Nash is religiously um, far from Puritanism. He's in the he's on the more um, establishment side of the church. He's an he's an anti-establishment personality with establishment politics. He doesn't doesn't go well for him. But so he it's interesting that he and Marlowe collaborate together. What they've written, and it's probably early, and the, the connection is probably somehow through some network of Cambridge graduates. What they've written is for a boys' company for the children's chapel, or the children of the chapel. These are underage actors. The boys' companies, uh, which go out of style shortly after Marlowe's death and then have a big comeback, tend to put the playwright more in the driver's seat. The playwright has much more control over the cast because they're children. They're technically, they are choir students. Yes, choir students. Is that funny? Is it funny? Oh, daddy's got a wire. Wires are funny. Hi. Who's that? Who's that? And they're not adult actors who have their own opinions and are writing uh, and are paying for this. The adult actors are the paying customers and they make the decisions. The playwrights work for them. In the boys' companies, the, the actors are all kind of conscripts and they really work for the playwrights and the other adults. These, you, children, <laughs> children's theater, the children's theater, perf the theater performed by, by children, not for children, tends to be satirical, ironic, anti-authoritarian. It is going to be less realistic because everybody, not just the women, are now being played by underage boys and teenage boys. It's not going to look real. Forget that. And there's a kind of comedy that's naturally associated with the boys' companies. Dido, Queen of Carthage, if it doesn't seem funny to you, um, well, read that first scene again. Read that very disrespectful first scene again. Where does Dido, Queen of Carthage, comes from? It is an adaptation of the most serious masterpiece of Latin literature, of the Aeneid, or of parts of the Aeneid. 
Aeneas is the father of the father of the Romans when he leaves Dido, queen of Carthage, to go off to Italy because the gods need him to create the, the destined city of Rome, which he doesn't create, but his descendants do, etc., etc. He is... Aeneas is an upstanding uh, Trojan prince who's gotten away from Troy. He has car famously carried out his son and his father. He's carried his father on his back. This will show you how much Aeneas thinks about women. Right? You got your father, you get your son, you get three generations of dudes. That's great. You can just go off and sail on instruments and just find women somewhere. I am not endorsing this. I am pointing it out. Yeah, and so the earlier in the earlier part of the Aeneid, we have this kind of episode where Dido, queen of Carthage, falls madly in love to her own political disadvantage and later personal disadvantage with Aeneas. Give her a break. He's the son of Venus, goddess of love. So if anybody's going to have, if any is going to be irresistible, it'd be the love goddess's um, heroic princely child come on doesn't mean he's going to be faithful his mother's not the god of his mother's not the goddess of monogamy no 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 she's not the other thing you remember here going back to what virgil the author of the aeneid is doing here carthage is the hereditary enemy of rome the main rival power they fight for mediterranean supremacy with they have three separate protracted wars with the Carthaginians. The final one, they actually famously like not only destroy the city, but salt the earth. They put salt in the Carthaginian farmland so no food will grow there. Carthage was in northern Africa. Very much, um, very much a grudge match. So the fantasy here in the original Roman text is like, <laughs> like, okay, you're 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 the enemy power, you know. Our great ancestor like seduced and dumped your ancestress. So that's how it is, right? There's a fantasy here of of um, just screwing the rival empire. Okay, there's that. So we're, we've moved on to early and late works of, of Marlowe, the less well-regarded ones. Let's talk in class about how you like Dido, Queen of Carthage. How do you like Dido, Queen of Carthage? Do you want that? Do you want a teeth soon? Yeah, let's get a teething toy for you.